Here's how to get better instructors and coaches on your floor. Hey everybody, my name is Jennifer Waters and I am the Sales and Systems Sensei. In this video today, let's dig into how to get actually better coaches and instructors on your floor so that you can accomplish more, teach more students and potentially work your way off the floor and into another position inside of your business that's gonna give you some more leverage. So let's dive in. We've got three simple things that you need to do. Numero uno. The first thing that I want you to understand is that if you have no job description, no outline of what you want, it's gonna be really hard for anybody to meet those expectations. So outline what it is that you want this person to do. Do they need to actually teach the classes from beginning to end? Is there a rank requirement? Are you just looking for them to assist in classes? You're the main instructor or coach, and then they're assisting. Like if you don't have a job description, that's gonna be really challenging. Another thing that I always like to do whenever I'm hiring instructors or coaches on the floor is I like to make sure that they know where they're going. Kind of like a student. When a student first starts, you wanna be able to paint a picture of where they're going. Again, for an instructor or coach that you're hiring, what are you doing on the first couple of weeks? Where do you need to be at 30 days? What's it gonna look like at 60 and 90? And what's gonna happen at your six month evaluation? If you've got that very clearly defined, then you guys are both on the same page about expectations and when you're gonna be checking back in and the frequency of those check-ins and what it is exactly that you're looking for. Just kind of remember that just because you put it job description down, doesn't mean that that person's clear on what the job description actually means. So you want to spell it out, talk about it, even though it's written down, make sure you're actually having a real conversation about it. Second thing, so very important. You want to make sure that you have all of the work hours, they're all plugged in. Like if they're automatically sent out via text, um, we use a system called whenIwork.com love it um just you can plug in people's hours it tracks their pay all, all those different things so that you can figure out okay this is how much i have allowed um, to be able to put them on payroll this is when they should show up for work this is when they should be getting off it'll send them notifications just so that you guys are all clear about what their work schedule is going to be how they need to show up what their role is going to be and another thing that you want to have in place it's kind of like to be, I guess you could say, cause it's not a third thing. But the second thing uh, to be is that you wanna make sure that you have a task list they're actually picking up and they're utilizing. Now, the task list is gonna have three different sections on it. And in one of my other videos, um, I will definitely make sure I outline this a little bit more, but you wanna make sure at the very top, it's like the before shift or before, we call it the whirlwind, before the whirlwind, things that they should be doing 15, 20 minutes before anybody else is showing up to class. And then you've got the whirlwind. I mean, that's kind of basic. Like, you know, if they're going to be assisting in class, they need to be doing a, a couple of things. I would try to narrow it down to the things that are most important to you. I'll tell you ours in case you want to steal it. It's totally fine. Uh, we want them to build rapport with the students. We want them to make active corrections on the floor. And we also want them to make sure that they're changing kids' lives uh, and adults' lives out on the mat. So these are all the things that we say that you have to do during the whirlwind. Now, at the end of the task list, you want to have some things that they're responsible for at the end of the day. So these could be things like tidying up, making sure that they finish any good job notes that they need to finish before they leave to help with student retention, or simply uploading their end of day report to Slack, which is something we also do for our assistant instructors and our coaches. So make sure you're doing all those things. Now let's move on to the third thing. Sound good? Cool. So on the third thing, what we wanna make sure, like if we wanna have better instructors, better coaches, we have to have training and it needs to be pretty frequent. I get asked this all the time. Uh, how often do you train your team? What does that look like? Is once a month good enough? Is once a week? Should I be doing it daily? The answer is yes. Uh, let me just break it down more into a timeline. So if someone's new, you should be training them every single day. Uh, maybe for the first 30 days, literally taking them through the motions of what they should be doing with their job and giving them instant feedback. If they did something good, 
talk to them about it. If they did something bad, and this is a mistake most people make, they don't talk to them about it. You have to, you have to talk to them about it. You have to say, hey, this isn't the procedure and the process that we go by. This is actually the procedure and process. So just make sure you follow that from now on. And really during the first 30 days, you're just trying to test the elasticity of this person. Do they have room to expand in their knowledge? And do they have room to expand in, and really are they pliable enough to be able to do it the way that you want them to do it? And if the answer is no, you should cut bait and keep on moving on down the river because they are not gonna be a good fit for your school, for your academy. If they're doing great and they're able to receive that feedback, then keep doing your thing, you know? Keep moving forward in training. And then as you do training, you're gonna wanna move them over into a continuous training that you do with your whole entire team. So let's let's imagine that you're moving up, you know, you've got maybe 10K coming in the door, something like that, and now you're starting to add on an assistant or a receptionist or something like that. You're gonna want to do training with them. It's only the two of you, but you're gonna wanna do it at least once a week. You guys train about some type of business process or procedure. Once you get up to a level like where you're bringing in seven figures or, you know, you're having <laughs> you're having six figure months, you know, like when you're getting 110, 120, 130K in the door and you've got a whole entire team that's producing it, like what we have in our flagship school, it's very important that each group within the team that specializes in certain areas are getting trained in those areas. Like your front desk team needs to be working on customer service, your sales team needs to be working on sales, and your instructor team needs to be working on making sure that the mat is looking sharp, that the students are progressing. All those things combined, you're gonna wanna make sure that those processes get put in place, very important. So as far as training goes, you do wanna have frequent training. And I would say if you're at that level, you're probably doing some version of daily or weekly as well as monthly. These are the things that are the most important aspects. If you really want to get better instructors, better coaches, you're gonna to wanna to do those things. Hey, listen, if you need help building out the systems that are gonna help you get there, I would recommend that you go over to our website, sevenfiguredojo.com. Inside, you're gonna see a training that's going to talk to you more about what we do and how we help school and academy owners just like you scale their business towards seven figures. And we do this by helping maintain your passion, getting your business to be profitable and making sure that we're achieving a common purpose together to change more lives. So listen, get on over there to sevenfiguredojo.com. Until the next time, keep being awesome. Thank you.